Everyone is ready. Okay, so there we go. So last couple times we met, it was a mixture of uh, learning the strategy, the supply demand strategy that we talk about here, and applying it in the live markets. So I thought today we'd do a little bit more applying it in the live markets since there are a number of um, so really good opportunities out there and um, let's just start start doing it having said that I can go over any market you want to look at the strategy uh, that I bring to these sessions right supply and demand we apply it to any and all markets stocks futures Forex options and for any financial purpose daily income weekly income building and protecting that longer-term wealth. So if you have any markets you want me to look at, certainly type them into the chat. And, um, and we can take a look. So, so why don't we start with uh, setting up kind of the, 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 just the broad, kind of a broad market overview, and then we'll dive in and go deeper from there. Does that make sense? Okay. So we start with the, probably the most important chart here to start with is the dollar. Okay. So since the last time we met, we spent time on this. If you uh, remember that session or watched the recording. We start with the larger time frame. All that's happened is the dollar has moved from our supply zone. Remember we were looking to, um, we were looking for the dollar to come down after it got to you know to or above at or above 99 remember that 99 area and now it's obviously falling all the way back down to demand hit supply falling back to demand that's what's happening in the bigger picture if you took advantage of that either with the dollar or euro or one of the majors against the dollar great if not then um let's look at what's next so i bring this chart up for two reasons one well, the main reason is you need to know where this, this, so much of this is about context. We can find supply and demand levels all over the place, but which ones do you take? Which ones offer the highest probability? Which ones offer the biggest profit zone? And so on. Does that make sense? Yeah, we'll definitely look at the pound. Pound is a, a big mover. Sure. So knowing where the dollar is there, we then come down to our uh, smaller time. So we see about halfway down in this move that we, we just saw in the weekly chart, we have a new uh, supply zone around 98.35. See that up here? Okay. And then we have some demand around, the market suggesting there's probably some demand around 96.80. However, we've been there before. So I don't know that we'd expect that level to hold again, right? I wouldn't be a buyer here. Coming down a couple time frames. Okay. We see, um, again, I don't know if we went over, uh, in, in, I do a morning trading uh, session every day at uh, uh, for uh, our, our members. And um, this is a level we're very focused on, the 98.65. So price did barely touch that level and fell, but we would look to take that area again. And that's really close to that, that, that important 99 we were looking at. But on the way down, we've developed two new supply zones. We've got one at 98, well, it's really 97, 90, and another one around 98, 30. And notice there are more supply and demand zones okay, that you see on the chart. Right there, there's. I'm sorry. There's there's more supply and demand zones on the chart than than I'm than I'm marking off for you. That's the important thing. There are more supply and demand zones on the chart that I'm marking off for you. Why am I choosing these? It's always a couple things. It's structure of the level and location of the level. That's everything. Okay. Um, I'll often get the question, you know, Sam. I, I, I understand the strategy and I'm getting pretty good at seeing the levels, but why do some levels work and others don't? This one looked perfect. Why didn't it work? This is the reason. OK. 
Okay, location, location, location. So here's a fresher demand zone than the one I showed you a few minutes ago, sitting at 97, uh, that's like 97.25 down to 97.10. Okay. So if you're trading the dollar, if you're trading any majors against the dollar, the last three charts we looked at are, you know, I can't tell you how important they are. Does that make sense? Everybody understand that? Okay. All right, let's keep going. So from here, why don't we go over to the pound and you'll see, uh, again, some levels that we we've gone over uh, multiple times. Here's the daily chart of the pound. Um, anybody get that or, or uh, looking at that? So this is level, you know, again, we've had on the charts for quite a while. This is 130.12 up to 130.70. Notice price just touched the level and fell. So we would look to, um, according to the rules, this level is okay to take again, right? That the fact that price just rallied up and just touched the level and turned, <clears throat> sorry, suggests that uh, gives us more evidence that supply greatly exceeds demand up there. Okay. And let's go. Let me Coming down to a smaller time frame, if we go look at, say, the four-hour chart, here we have two levels on top of each other. Now, price went through these areas, right? It turned at the area, went through those zones. So we wouldn't be surprised if price went higher. But higher means just taking it back up into the, the larger time frame level. Okay? So that's the pound. Get it? On the demand side a couple areas to look at. We have an ugly level down here around 126.75. You know, given what's to the left of the level, normally we wouldn't be too excited about it. But we do have this quick pullback here and price just barely touched the level and took off. So again, that's that secondary evidence that um, that's that secondary evidence that you know demand greatly exceeds supply there. So that's why we kept that one in. And then a, obviously a, another level down here, and this one a uh, little bit lower on the curve, 124.80 down to 124.30. And of course, these fresh levels down here, but those are, those are quite a ways down there. So we've got our supply and demand zones in the pound. We've got our supply and demand zones in the dollar. Okay, does that make sense? So whenever you're looking to enter positions in any of these majors against the dollar, always good to have your levels in the dollar, know where those levels are. And obviously if uh, when they all line, you know, when they line up in the euro and the dollar, they're almost always going to line up, right? Because they have to. The, the dollar index is a weighted index and the euro takes up the biggest slice of that pie. Um, but in all these, the more you can line those levels up with the opposing level in the dollar, the higher, higher the probability. Okay. So again, um, if you came a little late to the session, if there's any charts or markets you want to be looking at. Let's take a look. So let's keep going. So we spent time on the, you know, we started with the dollar, went out to the pound. Why don't we move over to the equity index markets? And these markets are really moving. So if you trade any of the equity index markets or have any interest in those, S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, Russell, DAX, Nikkei, Hang Seng, Nifty, any of those, Russell, right? I said Russell. Um, most of these markets, Here's the kind of the theme of right now, kind of Thursday, October 17th. Price has been to these areas, this area before, 
So yes, we are coming up to some supply zones. But be careful because price has been here before. Take a look. So if you're in if you're in uh you know the morning trading sessions with me, some of you um, have you know reported that you took the original trade here, which is fine. Even though we're, it looks like we're coming up to a nice supply zone again, just keep in mind we've been here before, so it's not fresh. Suggesting prices could go higher. Having said that, is this the time to buy into the stock market? Absolutely not. We want to wait for a pullback in price to demand. Demand is quite a bit lower, especially the gap demand levels. So not a lot of not a whole lot to do at the moment. If you want to keep things high probability, ideally you're already in these moves long from from our demand zones or you're in the bonds short from supply. Those are the positions we've put out for a while. So if you're not in those, you're looking for something to do, you know, in the big picture, you, you kind of, the, the smart thing to do is wait a little bit. Let prices get to your levels. We've got some short-term income, uh, daily, you know, daily income trading opportunities sitting below the lows of the past uh, day, day and a half. But we're far from that level now. But if you are a day trader, watch the 29.8250 down to 29.78 uh, with a stop just below that area. If we do hit these supply zones again, you know, you could get a little dip in price, maybe down to those levels. But those are just day trading opportunities down there. Remember, when we, when we apply the strategy here, it's any time frame, you know, any market, any financial purpose. Okay, we are looking at the NASDAQ, but there's not much to look at in the NASDAQ. So why don't we go on to another asset class? I think the S&P kind of covers it, right? We can take a look at, uh, we can take a look at the DAX. There is some stuff in the DAX to look at. If we go to the daily chart, you'll kind of see context around where the DAX is. So this is, right, the DAX is, DAX is the, um, you know, the big equity index market in Germany. So you can see price is kind of right in the middle. Now notice this, the upper supply zone there is still fresh. The lower one is not. Okay, upper supply zone fresh, lower one is not. Um, and we have a demand zone down here, but let's not spend time here because you can see price is kind of just in the middle. And this ties right into the theme that we were talking about where if you want to keep things high probability, right now is not the time to take action. Okay. Um, in the Nikkei, let's take a look here for a minute. So let's first look at the four hour chart. We do have some supply zones up here. Now we've been to this area before, not these levels, but this area. So coming up around 23,120 in the Nikkei, uh, you're probably going to run into some supply up there, and there's two levels on top of each other. And that's off of our demand at 21,100. So we'll let light prices kind of keep going and, and, and get there. On the demand side, we have new demand sitting just above 22,000. And um, so again, we're kind of right in between those levels. So we leave that alone for now. Now the bonds, the bonds are, you know, the similar story to the equities at the moment. Meaning um, price has fallen nicely from our supply down to our demand. So I, I, this is a trade, I don't know if we were together last time, but I, I took uh, I took this trade. And so could prices turn higher? They could, but we've been here before. Just like the equity index markets are approaching supply, but it's not fresh, meaning some of that supply has been filled already, um, lower probability areas. Same thing with the bonds. Yes, we're down into demand, but we've been here before which means some of the demand that was there before making those strong areas, causing a big rally initially, right? some of those orders are filled. 
So it's just a weaker level, lower probability the second time or, or you know, as you go deeper into that level. Okay. Sitting just above, though, we do have a fresh supply zone sitting at 161.29 up to 162.19. This is the 30-year bond futures. If you don't trade futures, maybe you want to look at the uh, TLT, which is the ETF for the 20-year. And we don't need to look any further than our four-hour chart. Again, if you've been coming to our sessions, um, Prices have just gone from our demand zone up to our supply zone, and now we're kind of back on the way down, but we do have a new supply zone at 141.70 up to 142.50. And um, we kept the supply and the demand in here because notice when price visited those areas, it just touched those levels and turned, suggesting that there's still a, a decent supply and demand imbalance there. Okay. Make sense? All right, and that is the bond market. Let's go take a look at oil. So in oil, probably the chart to look at is this one. I'm going to scrunch it up here. I know that might be hard for you to see, but it's important to have context. So right now, right around 53.10, we're sitting right in between supply and demand. So again, nothing to do at the moment in oil. But if we get down below 50 and a half, you run into demand zone on top of demand zone on top of demand zone below 50 and a half. Just like above 55, we run into a couple supply zones on top of each other, right? And remember how we want to play this. So let me go here for a second. Um, this is a screenshot from uh, the morning session uh, today. Uh, there it is. So what I wanted to share with you is this screenshot. Remember, the whole core of the strategy is this, right? When I say supply, demand, or in the middle, this is what I'm talking about. We've got our white space in the middle here, right? So we've got our white space in the middle. We've got our uh, little red, guys up here and our, our green ones down here, right? We want to be going, looking at markets, finding markets where prices are at levels that are outside of this white space in the middle. Remember, in the middle, we don't want to do anything. And that's, and that's where price is going to spend most of its time, okay? Occasionally, price gets down below the white space into this demand area where there is competition to buy. That's what demand is. It's that competition to buy that forces price back to the middle. Just like up here, we have all this competition to sell. All this competition to sell at supply forces price back down to the middle. Has everyone, does it, you know, if you've been with, I don't know if you've, how long you've been in, in my sessions or watching videos, but if you've, if you've been in there for a while, do you notice that you know, most of the time, price just touches the levels and turns. Okay? This is why. Because there's so much competition to sell up here at supply, so much competition to buy down here at demand, all that competition eliminates itself and forces price back to the middle. And all of this, so, so when we look at the price charts, and price charts right show us filled orders, trades that happened, but we understand that to find turning price, turning points, we, we need to focus on unfilled orders, 
All right? Who cares about the, remember chart price charts are filled orders, but who cares about filled orders? They don't give us information. Well, they do. They just tell us where all these trades happened. But what do we care about? In other words, what's the only thing responsible for prices turning in a market, which is key? It's unfilled orders. So we need to look at a price chart, which we do, that shows us filled orders, but our brains need to process this picture that you see here. Does that make sense? Unfilled orders. And when you really get this, it all comes down to this razor sharp focus on answering these two questions. Where will prices turn? Supply and demand or unfilled orders. Where will prices go? Filled orders. Unfilled orders cause prices to turn. Filled orders facilitate price movement. That's why price moves so fast through the middle. There's nothing to stop it, right? All of these charts and markets we've been looking at for so many years, um, they all look the same, do the same thing, all that. Okay, let's take a look at uh, another market. Actually, I've been rambling here, going over lots of markets. If you want to, if there's a market you want to look at, I can totally, uh, we can totally do that here. Just, just let me know, and I'll I'll go to it. Let's go to the euro for a minute. Um, why? Well, prices come off of our 60-minute demand zone here, but keep in mind this market is likely to run into supply around 112.08 to 112.31. That's 112.08 to 112.31. To um, not the best looking area of supply, but the market's likely to find some up there. Nice profit zone in between. And, but again, you know, these levels, look at how price spends, you know, very little time there. Backing out to the four hour, we have, um, oh, let me see here. We have demand again, um, let's see. Yeah, these are a little bit tighter levels. Um, the supply side here, when you see a white circle like that, just that just means it's it's a little lower odds level because it's either not fresh or it's an overnight level. And then you can see our demand here. Now we're looking at a four-hour chart. But again, with any of these, if you're you know if you're trading any of the majors, always a good idea to know where the dollar is and where it's likely to go. And remember, we don't need to look too far past this four-hour chart, okay? Okay, uh, any other markets you want to take a look at? Again, not a problem. You can go to just about any market you want. Uh, if not, I'll start running through some more of mine. Why don't we take a look at a set of markets that um, people don't normally look at. Maybe we can introduce you to some new ones. Here is copper. So I bring up copper for two reasons. One, it's, uh, it's rallying nicely off of our demand zone that we found on the daily chart here. Uh, but maybe more importantly, it's approaching, or, get, or not approaching, but it, it's somewhat on the way to a supply zone it looks to be uh, looks to be a decent level. Okay, so we're looking at a 180 mid chart of copper, and you can see just above all these highs, we have a fresh supply zone here, and that uh, offering a decent profit zone of maybe three to one or so down to that you know daily uh, daily demand area. All right, let's keep going. Um, I was going to go to the Swiss franc, but that one's actually going in a wrong direction. It's moving away from our level. The Aussie dollar has a level that we probably want to take a look at. It's actually hitting it right now, I think. I had this up on the screen in the beginning so you could see it. So it's hitting this 6842. The reason for the uh, yellow circle 
is the level was developed at a, at a, at a time of day that is not ideal. Okay, a time of day where there's not much activity going on in the FX markets. All right. So that just doesn't mean a level can't work. I wouldn't be giving it to you here if I didn't think it could or if it didn't meet the rules. It does. But it just understands a little bit lower probability uh, when it's like that. And that's, that's what the yellow circle is for. Notice it's above all of this white space. Remember we just talked about the white space. There it is. This right here is this in here. Right? That level is likely somewhere up here. Not necessarily up here, but somewhere close to that. Okay? On the demand side, we have some new levels uh, that are not, not that ideal. I wouldn't be buying there for a, a, a move higher, but um, more for profit target for that, for that supply zone we just looked at. And those commits start around 68 even. All right, let's keep going. Um, we're looking at silver at the moment. A couple things to note on silver. Um, the blue circle here means, according to our guide, it's a level that's developing. It's not officially a level yet. It's developing. So we'll see what happens there. If prices do fall, which they're likely to, we do have some larger time frame demand down here in silver where we would be interested buyers. That's you know, down closer to the uh, 16, you know, 58-ish area. Okay. You know, and remember, when it comes to strategy, I know I just kind of said this, but remember, price charts show us filled orders. What we care about and what causes price to turn are the unfilled orders. That's why you, you constantly need to be thinking about where price is in relation to this picture. You could have the perfect supply or demand zone, but if it's in the white space, it's probably not going to work. That same exact looking level outside of the white space is probably going to work perfect. In fact, it's probably just going to touch the level in turn. Does that make sense? Okay, let's keep going. Um, that's not the market I wanted. I wanted this one. Okay, so we're looking at the New Zealand dollar that has fallen nicely. Uh, we had this level in here from our larger time frame supply. Now, let's go down to, I want to bring this up because it's kind of getting closer to this level. So there's an area here on the, uh, we see it on the 180 minute chart. Now, we can probably tighten that level up to right up in here, which is the origin of this drop. And now you're really combining two areas. So if you go with the 63.85 to 64.15, that's 63.85 to 64.15, you're combining two areas and playing for a move. Uh, if you want to, the risk reward actually isn't that great, but... Remove down to, you know, somewhere in here. Okay, or we can also look to take that long as well. All right, don't forget too, if you have any questions, I just put my email address in the chat, sam.sidenatradingacademy.com. Well, hopefully you understand the strategy a little bit better. We, I believe we went over all of the, uh, the five major asset classes, equities, bonds, energies, metals, and FX. 
And um, if you have any questions, email me anytime. And uh, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone. And again, just email me if you have any questions.